OK, so what is the shattery principle? So what it says, if you have system, they are original already at equilibrium, that at an equilibrium state. And if there's actually a change is imposed to your system, then the system will respond to that change by shifting in a direction that tends to reduce the change. For example, if I have a system, it's already at equilibrium. I heat up my system. Okay, then the system will actually move to a direction that can minimize that temperature increase. So that's the basic idea of the shuttle principle. In all the questions you encounter this chapter, only three things can change your equilibrium, nothing else. Anything besides these three, they're just something that's going to confuse you. So the three things are actually concentration, temperature, and the pressure. When you see something is actually relevant to the Le Chateau principle, those are the things that matter. One thing you're going to see a lot in your homework, which is something going to confuse you a lot, is actually the terms called the catalyst. Okay, one very, very important concept you should have is actually the catalyst did not actually affect your equilibrium. The only things that catalyst is going to change is these things for the activation energy. And if you lower down the activation energy, you are going to change the reaction speed. Okay, you just make the train go faster. But the end state, okay, the equilibrium doesn't really change. Just make the reaction go faster so that you reach equilibrium faster. If I give you a question, which of the following affects the equilibrium? Okay, and I give you A, concentration, B, temperature, C, pressure, or catalyst. The answer should be A, B, and C. You cannot select the, the D. We want to see how these things are going to affect your equilibrium, right? Concentration, I think, is actually most easy to comprehend. Okay, for example, if you have H2 plus N2, that give you an H3. If you want to balance this, this will be 2, this will be 3. So let's actually balance the equation for the uh, ammonium production. So we know the K is going to equal to an H3 square over H2 to the cube and two to the first power. So now think about this. If I increase the concentration of H2, okay, if I increase the concentration of H2, the reaction will move to the reactant side or product side. You can actually use these things to think. K is what? Equilibrium constant, okay? What is the key word? A constant. Okay, so this is a fixed value. So if today you increase this, in order to keep the same value, that means what? You need to produce more this, right? Then the direction is going to move toward the product side. Make sense now? So if I decrease this, then what? You should move to the Reactant side, right? This, that is basically the idea. So you need to know how the concentration is going to shift your equilibrium. All right, so you can use the concept of equilibrium constant. If I increase my reactant, I need to move to the product side so that I can increase the concentration of the product so that I can keep the constant as a constant. Okay, then we're going to go through two examples, one using the pressures, one using the temperature. One thing you are going to find uh, in your homework is that it did not just say the word pressure. You actually say something that implies the change of pressure. For example, predict the effect of compression. So compression means what? You actually change the volume of your container, right? 
and then the net effect is actually you increase the pressure. OK, so you need to be able to translate. Compression means actually your pressure is going to increase. All right, so that, that is actually the first thing that you should you should see. In which these are the words you want to pay more attention. OK, if you see something like this, that means actually your system is already at equilibrium. OK, and then it exerts a certain change. So if you see some question like that, you know this question must related to the the Chatelet principle. Then you should see only three things matters: concentration, temperature, and pressure. Okay. So here apparently it's actually about the pressure. So let's use the first example: two PBS in the solid form plus three O two. That give you two PBO plus two SO two in the gas form. Okay, this is a solid form. So here, things is actually talking about the effect of pressures, right? The things that matters is the substance existing in the gas form. All the other things is actually irrelevant because only gas provide the pressure. Even though this equation looks very long, right? Ignore this, ignore that. Only gas molecule contribute to your pressure. OK, so if you see pure solid, just cross it out so you can see the things more clearly. So now if you look at these equations. If the reaction moves toward the reactant side, what gas are you going to generate? Three more of O2, right? What happens when you move to the product side? 2SO, OK? Which side give you higher pressure? 3O2, right? Because there are three more of O2. PV equals MRT, right? So if you have la larger number of more of gas molecule, you have higher pressure. So with that in mind, OK, now let me ask you, if today I'm going to increase the pressure of my system, Based on the Le Chatelet principles, you will know the system is going to move to a side. They can decrease the pressure. So you know the reaction has to move to a lower pressure side, okay, to compensate the effects, right? Therefore, you know the reaction should move toward the product side. That's how you make the judgment, okay? With that concept, if you look at this. Now predict if I exert the pressure in a system for these specific reactions, which side will it move? The answer is ignited, OK? Three possible answer you're going to see in this type of questions. OK, reactant side, product side, or neither. OK, the very last one, temperature. For this reaction, you know, N2 plus 3H2 give you 2H3. Delta H reaction is actually negative 92.22 kilojoules more. Every time when you see these things, what does it mean? Exothermic. So it means actually releasing heat, right? If you go to your product side, it's going to release in heat. the things on the top into this, right? It's the same question, right? But on the top, I say delta H equals to a negative value. But once you see that, you should be able to see this is actually what happened. N2 plus 3H2 is going to give you a product plus heat because heat is actually generated when you form the product. If I lower down the temperature of my system, then you know the reaction will move to a direction that produces more heat. So you can compensate the change I have made. So in other words, the equilibrium will shift to which side? Reconcile or the product side? Product side. 
So look at this equation more carefully, okay? You know only when the reaction moves to the product side, you produce heat. So in other words, if you move to the product side, the temperature of your system is going to increase, right? So if today I lower down temperature of the system, in order to compensate that change, that means my system needs to actually produce more heat. Therefore, the reaction has to move to the product side to compensate that change. Okay, so that is the concept you should have. On the other hand, if I say, if I increase my temperature, then the reaction is going to shift to my reactant side. Okay, let, me, let me write down this so that you can have a good reference, okay. So the equilibrium will shift to the product. 